welcome back to the channel. It's a Lit Life with Miranda Reads, and today we're going to talk about Goodreads. What is it? How do I use it? And what you can do with it? First off, my credentials. So I am within the top 10 most popular reviewers on Goodreads of all time, and I'm the 22nd most followed with around 130,000 followers. I have written 1500 reviews on Goodreads and that's a lot. <laughs> so how did I get into this? Goodreads started as a hobby for me back in 2017. Now for those of you who don't know, I was in grad school at that time and while I've always been an avid reader, I found that the more I was in grad school, the more I was drifting away from fun books. I was reading science articles, I was reading textbooks, everything research related. And personally, I started to feel a little purposeless. So one thing I wanted to do is go back to one of my core loves, which is reading. So I made an effort to start reading fun books more and I had a journal that I would write down what my book thoughts were and did I like it, did I not, etc. However, it felt isolating. Grad school for a lot of people can be really isolating. And while I am blessed to have an amazing support system, at the end of the day, I would come home to an empty apartment with my books, my book journal, and it just felt lonely. So around this time, I started talking with some of my grad student friends about books every lunch period. And I would get into the longest rants that would have them cracking up about the books. And it was then that one of my friends, Angela, told me that I needed to join Goodreads and start writing these thoughts as reviews. And as she explained it to me, Goodreads is a website where you can share your book recommendations, book reviews, and talk books with people all around the world. And like I said, grad school was a bit lonely for me, so I really liked the idea of connecting to people all over the world. And then she said the key word that gets any graduate student just running free. <laughs> she told me that if my Goodreads account got big enough that publishers will send me free copies of their books for a review on the website. And I just love that idea. So if you're curious how I've gotten over 500 books since 2017 completely free, check out the video above. To start off with how to make an account on Goodreads. And to make a Goodreads account, you really just go to the website, goodreads.com, and then sign up with your Gmail, other emails, Facebook, Twitter, Amazon, etc. One cool thing is that if you have a Kindle account, you can link that to your Goodreads because Amazon bought Goodreads ages ago. And you can then, if you highlight or make a note on your Kindle text, it appears as something that you can see on your Goodreads page, which is kind of fun. So now that you've made your profile, you can do a few things. One is you could go to the home page, which kind of brings up the feed articles or like other people you follow and their reviews kind of appear on that. If you go to the right, you can go to my books where you will see your books, but we haven't added any of those yet. Stay tuned for that. Now browse is a drop down that can take you to several fun links like the Goodreads Choice Awards, which every year Goodreads does a site-wide vote about the best books of the year, which I've made a video on if you want to check that out. It also takes you to recommendations or Goodreads lists, which are great places to just check out if you're not sure what you want to read next or if you want to know what are other people on Goodreads reading. You can also check out news and interviews, which I actually did get interviewed once for a Goodreads article, and I can link it down below for you. And then you can go to community, which will often sort books by new and category. And you can just see what other people who enjoy that genre are doing. Now, moving right along, there's the search books button, which obviously we'll get into that in a second. And then we have notifications. So if someone likes your status or if they commented, there'll be a little notification there. So always you can change your settings of your account. And that changes how many notifications you get, whether or not your reviews are public or private under the settings page. If you're in a Goodreads group, then you can go to a group discussion. If someone sent you a message on Goodreads, you can click on the message icon. And then if there's any friend requests, you can accept them on the friends button or just see what your friends are doing. 
And then finally, there's a button that talks about your profile and then takes you to different areas on the site. All right, now that we've made an account, we're gonna talk about reading a book. One of the most asked things to me on Goodreads are new users asking me how to read a book. Now, like I said earlier, this is a reviewing site, not a reading site, so they don't have a ton of books out there for you to just read for fun. That being said, I did discover that there was a reading ebook section on Goodreads where you can get free books. However, a lot of them are older books or excerpts from more popular books to kind of entice you in whether or not you want to buy it. And you can also apply for the various giveaways, which is either an ebook or a physical copy of the book from the publisher. But in my experience, it's pretty rare to get a book from that. So as a book reviewing site, one thing that I loved about Goodreads is that it's almost like a digital bookish journal that other people can comment on and you can discuss books about. So in order to add a book to your account, you have to go to the books page. Now, all you have to do is really just type in the title and then select the book. Now, if you cannot find the book on there, one, make sure you spell the title correctly, but two, sometimes the books haven't been added to Goodreads yet, which has happened to me maybe five to six times, but that is only when the book is really unpopular, really old, or absolutely brand new which case you can add it yourself if you want. So looking at a book's page, there's obviously the picture of the book. You can switch your edition if you have like the digital, the audio, or a different exclusive cover. You have the title of the book, you have the authors, and if you click on the author, you can actually see what other books that author wrote. From there, there's a description. There's a link if you wanna buy it on Amazon or other online stores. Below that is a little information about the type of book you chose. If the book won any major awards, it's also mentioned down there as well. And then below that is your friends reviews, followed by lists with books, and then the community reviews. Community reviews are all the public reviews sorted based off of popularity. So now you have to select from the drop down whether or not you want to read it, if you're currently reading it, or if you already read it. Once you've added to one of those three categories, this book becomes linked to your account. So now if you were to go to one of those three main shelves, you can see it. You can also add more bookshelves to your account, but your books have to always be one of the three main categories. I like to keep track of which books of Owl Crate I've picked up over the year, or which ones are my literary cookbooks. So I can just click that link and very easily find it. Now that you've added a book to one of those three shelves, you can write a review for it. So the want to read section is for books that you're interested in. And typically, you don't really write a long review for that. Sometimes I might add a sentence or two if I'm really excited about the book. The currently reading section is used to mark the books that you are currently reading. I personally use that to keep track of which books were sent to me for a review. And at any given time, I have about 30 to 40 books <laughs> on that shelf. But yeah, I'm not actually reading all of those at once. I'm normally reading about three books at a time, an ebook, an audiobook, and a physical copy. And the red section is the one that gets you keep track of what books you have read. So once you hit red on a book, a pop-up will happen, which will be like your reviewing window. Now you can put stars on there. Is it one star horrible, five stars amazing? And then you can write your review, followed by like the dates read, and there's other little stuff on there. As far as what to write when you're writing a book review, it can be anything. I have written essays about the merits and the depths of despair I've gone through when reading books. But I've also written two sentence reviews and I've written poems. I've made a bingo card and I've done reviews that are entirely gifts. It is literally up to you and there is no teacher telling you what you can and can't do. So write what you feel. However, if I were to summarize what I typically do, it would be picture, quote, summary, quote, my own personal thoughts. Now I always add a picture when I'm writing a review because I think it's just visually more interesting. You see a lot of text and you see a picture, you look at the picture first. So I like to do that in order to like kind of bring my reviews to other people's attention. Now if you want to add a picture to a review, you really do need a link outside of Goodreads. So something like Instagram, Imgur, or Shutterfly. Is that the right? 
I think so. You'd have to have like an HTML link because you can't upload photos to Goodreads to add to your review. When I first got into Goodreads, I wasn't sure how to use special text, which is like bolds or italics or adding in a photo. But Goodreads has a little guide for you over here, so you can kind of work with it that way. I always try to include a quote that really summarizes an awesome part about the book at the beginning. And then I put my own summary of what happens in the book. Which I know Goodreads has a summary, but they don't always highlight the things that I feel like should be highlighted. Plus, if someone just sees my review on its own, it provides some much needed context. Then another quote and then my own thoughts about the book. Also, please be nice, and if you have a spoiler, which honestly, sometimes you have to have a spoiler in the review because it really affected whether or not you enjoyed the book, I use that HTML text, and I just kind of make it so that if you want to see the spoiler, you can click on the link, and then the text will pop up, or if you don't, you just don't click on the link. So now that you've written a review, you can choose whether or not to just save it, or save it and post it to your profile, which means that we're going to go to your profile next. So clicking on your profile, you can see that there is a lot happening. So we're going to start off upper left. That is where you add in your profile photo. Below that talks about your ratings and your reviews. And then it has your leadership board stats. Like the most popular reviewer, the most read reviewer, who added the most books, that sort of stuff. And if you hover over one of those, it kind of shows you where they are on the leadership board according to week, month, year, and all time, as well as where the reviewer is globally or in their individual country. So like you can see, like this week, I'm the most, I'm the fifth most followed, but globally of all time, I'm the 22nd. So that's just a kind of like a fun thing to kind of keep track of. And I'll talk a little bit later about how my account got so big and what you can do to get yourself on those leadership boards. So then to the right of that, you have all kinds of just like little things you can fill in about your profile. And if you hit edit profile, you can edit those elements. I have my links to my other social media. I have my book website. I also have my rating system, which is just kind of a goofy way that I talk about how good a book was. And then if we go further to the right is the reading challenge, which is my thumbnail, which thank you, people at Goodreads for sending me that so I can use it as my thumbnail. So the reading challenge actually comes across the world and you essentially just pledge how many books you want to read in a year. Then throughout the year you can see the total number of books pledged and then how close people are to receiving their goal. On average people pledge around 44 books to read per year. It also shows you what other years you've pledged and as you can see from 2017 upwards I have exceeded every single pledge I've made with last year being around 398 books. That being said, I don't want to get too ahead of myself because I'm also going to be writing my thesis. So I only did 280 this year as my pledge. And right below that is your year in books. So if you click on that, that kind of keeps track of all of the books you've read in 2020, as well as some of the fun smaller stats about what you've done. Like your shortest, your longest, your average book length, as well as your most popular and least popular book you've read. And it just goes through all the books you've read throughout the year. If you want to see 2021s, you can just say, see next year, and you can see how your year in books is doing so far. Now going back to the profile, if we go back over to the left, you can feature one bookshelf, so like your absolute favorites, which is a lot, a lot of people do and what I've done, as well as those little book tags that you've made, like I was saying earlier. And then it shows your three most recent currently reading books. Then there's notes and highlights, which if you make public, you can see. And then below that is your feed, and that's where that review that ages ago we said add to feed shows up. <laughs> One more thing about the Kindle Notes and Highlights, my fun fact of the day, is if you go to Midnight Library's Goodreads page, you can actually see my Kindle Notes and Highlights like right at the beginning of the books page. And that's because it was featured by Goodreads. And they pinned it to the top of the book, which is kind of a fun thing to do. Jumping over to the right again for your profile, there's just other little things that you can do if you're interested in. There's lists that Goodreads makes. There's polls and there's genres and you can just kind of look and add that as you see fit. If you go right below year in books, that is your friends. Now, as I said earlier, one of the really big appeals for me for Goodreads is the connection to other readers. 
So when I first joined the site, I went to the page that shows all of the top reviewers for across the world and I just added them all as friends on Goodreads. Much like Facebook, both people have to agree to a friendship before you can become a friend. And if you don't want to add people as friends or if you've already maxed out on your friends on this site, you can still follow their account and get updates from them. So a lot of people ask me, how do I get so many followers on Goodreads? After all, there's less than 40 people on this site that have over 100,000 followers. And to be honest, I don't really know. <laughs> if I had to say why, I would say it's probably a mix between writing entertaining reviews, writing lots of reviews, writing reviews early for books, and engaging with the audience. As I'm writing my reviews, I try to make them quick and easy to read. So it's not like a giant wall of text. I tend to have very short paragraphs that you can kind of read at a glance. Because people come to the site for a brief peek at what this book is, not a super crazy in-depth analysis. I also try to be real and honest about my book reviews. So if there's a trope I hate, I will call it out. But I'm also very careful to never say mean things about the author or to people who love the book. Because just because I hated a book doesn't mean it's a bad book. You could love it and it could be the best book in the world to you and that's awesome. I also really focus on writing reviews early. So with my contacts at various publishers and through NetGalley, I can get a lot of books before they're published, sometimes months or even a year or more in advance. Which means I can get my review written and up on the Goodreads before a lot of people have read it. So that means my review will be one of the first ones that other people see, therefore they're more likely to check out my account and what else I've written. And it's a numbers game. Like I read 398 books last year and I have 1500 reviews on the site. So like my reviews are spread out like everywhere. So more than likely, if you're just going through Goodreads, you're gonna see me somewhere. And lastly, I like to engage with my audience. Maybe not as much right now because I'm starting to write my thesis for my PhD, but I used to spend like a couple of evenings a month just looking at what other people are writing about books, commenting, liking, and just bonding with people. <laughs> so I have, I was a very active account that would engage regularly with the audience, which then encourages them to check out your stuff and becomes like a self-fulfilling loop. All right, well, that took me way longer to film than I initially anticipated, but I'm really happy to be able to share my experience with Goodreads and how I use Goodreads with you all. I want to thank you so, so much for watching and don't forget to add in your 2021 reading challenges.